All right, hey everybody, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time joining, my name is Shane and this is The Coding Zoo. Our goal at The Coding Zoo is to help others learn how to program. So we've been going over data structures. In today's video, we're gonna go over lists. We're gonna go over what a list is and how to use it. Specifically, we're gonna go over array list today. If that interests you, stick around. We're gonna jump right in. All right, in my previous lesson, we covered arrays. In this lesson, we're going to go over lists. We're going to go over specifically array list. So what is a list? In computer science, a list is an abstract data type that represents a finite number of ordered values where the same value may be in the list more than once. So that's a key thing to remember. The same value may be in the list more than once, right? So what's the difference in a list and an array? So as we go over this list, I'll kind of point those things out. All right, so on my desktop here, I've got a few examples. Let's go over them. So first, let's talk about how to create a list. So right here, I'm creating a list called ages. Now, ages is an array list. I'm creating an array list. Now, you'll notice I have list, and I have less than sign, integer, and the greater than sign. So I'm creating a list, and I'm going to store integers in that list. So when you're creating a list, you can specify exactly which type you want to include in the list using generics. Here I'm specifying I want to store integers in the list. So what is list? Well, I mentioned earlier, list is an abstract type. So what does that mean? Well, in this case, that means it's, it is basically an interface. If I go inside of the list, you'll see that Java is implemented a interface called list. So list is an abstract type. Underneath that abstract type, you can have all kinds of different kinds of list, concrete types. In this case, we're going over array list. That's the concrete, less abstract type, array list. I'm creating a list of integers called ages equals new array list. And you'll see my less than and greater than side. And then you'll see my open and close parentheses. So this is generics. Generics lets you specify what type you want to store in the list. Now, one thing I want you to take note with arrays, we covered in our previous lesson, arrays you can store um, basically uh, a collection of primitive types. Can you do that with a list? Let's look at this example. So in this sample, you'll see I'm getting a do not, it cannot compile. You'll notice it, ha it has the line underneath it. No instance, it's basically this cannot compile. Why is that? Well, a list or an array list cannot store primitives. Unlike an array, an array can store primitives, a list cannot. So it doesn't like this, it can't use this. This is an integer primitive. I'm saying store that in the list, it doesn't like that. It won't let you do that. All right, just, so that's just a th key thing to note. You can only store objects in a list. You cannot store primitives in a list. Let's move on to our next example of creating a list. Here I've created a list of integers called ages. Let's look at another example of creating a list. All right, so here I am creating a what? A list of strings. So I've got list less than sign, string greater than sign. I'm calling the variable names equals new array list, less than sign, greater than sign, open parentheses, close parentheses, semicolon. So here I'm creating a list of strings. My variable is called names. Pretty simple, I'm creating an array list. Now, when I use this list keyword, when I use this array list keyword, just key thing to know, in Java, when you do that, you're bringing in objects, you're bringing in interfaces, you have to import them. So if I look at the top here, you'll see I have import, Java util array list, import Java util list. So I'm importing those objects and interfaces to use. Okay, so I've created an array list. One thing to note about an array list is, well, what's inside of an array list? An array list is nothing but a wrapper around an array. So underneath, an array list uses an array to store data. Now I mentioned in a previous lesson that an array has a finite size. When you first create an array, it's set to a certain limit. Well, array list, when you first create an array list, it creates an array and that array is set to a certain limit. In Java, the default size is 10. So when I do equals a new array list, it sets it to 10. Now I could make it a little different. I could say, hey, I don't really like that default and I could specify my own size. So here I'm doing new array list and you'll notice in my parentheses, I'm setting an initial capacity. I'm setting it to three, right? 
I'm actually specifying my own size. An array list is basically a wrapper around an array. So why would you use an array list? Well, it does a lot of things for you. An array list gives you more features on top of an array. Let's, and I'll, let's go ahead and I'll show you how to add an array list and I'll explain that more. So how do I add to this array list? Well, I've got this array list called names. I'm going to add names to it. So here I'm doing names add Shane. Here I'm doing names add Anthony. So names dot add parentheses and I put my string in quotes in parentheses semicolon. Pretty simple. If this was an integer, I do names dot add integer. Put your integer there, right? Very simple. Names dot add Nick, right? So I've just added three names to my names array list. Now I have this print list helper method that I created earlier. Let's take a look at that real quick. All it's going to do is it's going to it's going to loop through my array and it's going to print it out for me. So we'll go over this in a, in a few minutes, in a few seconds. I'm just using this helper method to basically print a label and loop through my array and print out what I just put into the array. And I'll explain how the loop works in a, in a few seconds. I have my array of names. I've added three names to it and we're going to print it out. Let's run it real quick. All right, so here's my example. I have created an array list and I looped through and I printed them out, Shane, Anthony, and Nick. So you can see here, it added three names to my list. Pretty simple. Let's move on to the next one. In this one, I'm gonna show you how to get something out of the list using an index. So just like with an array, a list has a way to get values out of it by index. And with a list, you do list.get and you specify the index. All right, array list are zero based just like arrays. So index two, that would give me, well, Shane is gonna be index zero, Anthony is gonna be index one, Nick is gonna be index two. So here I'm gonna to go to the names. I'm going to get index two and I'm gonna print it out. Let's run it. All right, so in my example three, get by index, I printed out Nick. And Nick is my index two. I have index zero, index one, index two, pretty simple. So I can add to my array list and I can get stuff out by index, very simple. Let's move to the next one. Now, before we move to the next one, I just wanna mention, when I use this get, I'm using an index. I know exactly where I want to get something. If you have the index, a getting data out of an array list is O of one. It's constant time, it's big O of one. Just wanted you to take note of that. So if you're familiar with big O, this is big O of one, it's constant time. This is very fast to get something out of an array list using index. That's if you know what the index is. Let's see about looping through an array list and trying to find something. What if I'm trying to find Nick to see if Nick is in the list? I don't know what its index is. I don't even know if Nick is in the list. So I can't say names.get2. I don't know that Nick is at two. Let's assume I don't know that Nick is in the list and I don't know what index it is. So how do I search the list for a particular string? Here's, a, here's one way of doing it. I can use a regular for loop. So just like with arrays, I can do for, and I can declare the index int, index equal to zero. I can have this index to keep track of where I'm at while I'm looping, where I'm, where I'm searching. I'm gonna keep searching y index is less than names.size. So size tells you how many elements are in the array list. Index equals zero, I'm gonna start with zero. I'm gonna keep looping and as long as index is less than the list dot size. Each time I loop, I'm gonna add one to my index. Index equals index plus one is basically what this means. As I loop, I'm going to say, hey, names dot get the index. Of course, the first one's gonna be zero. So I'm gonna do names get zero index. I'm gonna get that value. Does it equal Nick? If it does equal Nick, I'm going to print it out. Found Nick at index zero. If it doesn't equal Nick, I'm going to keep going and keep going until I find Nick, if Nick is even in the list. So this is one way to loop. This is one way to get data. If you don't know what the index of something is, but you know it might be in the array, you can search the array. You can traverse the array. This is big O of N. This is called linear time. Let's run it real quick. So this is that example. I found Nick at index two. So again, it's zero based index. Shane is at index zero. Anthony is index one, Nick is at index two, and it actually found it in the loop. So it just looped through here, it looped through the array list until it found Nick, and then once it found Nick, it ran this piece of code and printed it out. Pretty much just like an array. Now, is there another way to loop through a list? Sure there is, let's look at that. So I've got another for loop, I've got a for each loop. All right, so for each string name 
in names. Do this right here. If name equals Nick, system out print found Nick. For every string in names loop, put the value in this variable called name, and then you can access that variable name. Here I'm checking the name if it equals Nick, and if it does, I'm gonna print it out. Pretty simple for each loop. So here's that example right there, found Nick. This is the first one where it found Nick at index two, printed that out right there. Here's the loop where it says system out print found Nick. So it looped through that array and it found it. Here, let's, let's show you another way of looking at that. I'm just gonna print out everything in that list. So I'm gonna do system out print line name. So for each name in names, print it out. Let's run that. There we go. Printed out the three names in that list. Shane, Anthony, Nick. So traversing an array list, very simple, pretty easy to do. Now, what's one difference with an array list versus an array? Well, I mentioned earlier that array list is basically a, a wrapper around an array, but adds on features of an array. It keeps track, an array list keeps track of what index is, is the next one that's empty. An array list keeps track of, is my array full yet? What does it do when your array is full? Well, if you manage the array yourself, you'd have to create a new array, copy data from your, create a new array, a bigger array, copy data from your old array, which is full, put the data into your new array and throw the old array away. You'd have to manage and code that yourself. An array list, an array is, an array can't grow on its own, right? It's set to a certain size and it stays at that size unless you create a new array. Well, array list is different. An array list is basically a dynamic array. It can grow. It's smart enough to where it grows on its own. Here's an example. Now, you know that I set this array list to a size of three at the very beginning, and I put three names inside of it. So that tells you that array list is full. So can it grow on its own? Let's find out. So in this example, I'm gonna print out the size and I'm gonna add two more names to it. If it grows on its own, if it's not stuck at three, then my size should increase to five. I'll go from size three to five. We initially know that the array underneath the scenes is set to three. That's what I set the array list size to, three. All right, let's run it. An array list or list automatically grow. That's one of the benefits over using an array list versus an array. Automatically can grow. Started out with a size of three. I added two names to it. I ended up with a size of five. Here's my new array list. It has Shane, it has Anthony, it has Nick, it has Don, it has Christina. It has five entries. So underneath the scenes, my array list took care of creating a new array, throwing my old, copying values from my old array into my new array, and throwing my old array away. It managed that for me. That's what's cool about an array list. It does things for you that you wouldn't, you'd have to do yourself if you were using an array. That's a key feature of array list over using an array. Now, what if I wanted to remove something from the array list? How hard is that? How can I do that? Here, I'm gonna do that by saying names, the name of my array list, dot remove. So it's going to search all the way through my array list, looking for what I'm telling it to remove. I'm telling it to remove Don. I'm telling it to remove a string. This is an array list of strings. I'm saying find the string that equals Don and remove it. It's gonna loop through that and do that. Well, how fast is that? How long does that take? Well, that's a big O of N. That's linear time. It's gotta loop through there and find it. So it's linear time. All right, so I could remove Don from the list doing it this way. It's gonna search for it. It's gonna find, if it finds it, it's gonna remove it for me. Let's go ahead and run that. Okay, in my previous example, you saw there were five elements in the array in the array list, Shane, Anthony, Nick, Don, and Christina. Now, after I removed Don, and I, pr I printed out the array list right here, I told it to find Don and remove it. it. It found it, it searched the array in the array list object, if it found it and removed it. Here I printed it out, what do I have left? Shane, Anthony, Nick, Christina. So now I have four items left. It found it and removed it. What's another way I can remove an item from an array? Well, let's comment this one out and let's uncomment this one. Another way I can remove something from an array is I can do it by index. Now, you saw up here that I can get something from the array by doing names.get and the index. I can also do the same for removing. I can do names.remove and the index. So since I'm not saying remove a string from this list of strings, I'm saying remove this integer I'm saying remove an index. It's going to remove whatever item is at, at index 
three in the array list. Let's run it. Okay, so here's my original array list. I had five items in it. Shane, Anthony, Nick, Don, Christina. It's going to remove whatever is index three. So index, uh, an array list is uh, zero based, right? It's an array underneath. It's a zero based indexed. So zero, one, two, three. So I'm going to remove Don. Did it remove Don? Let's look at it. Shane, Anthony, Nick, Christina. Don was removed. It removed index three. Perfect. Pretty simple. So what did you learn about array list? Well, array lists are pretty much like arrays, except they're a little bit better. They manage things for you. With an array, I have to keep track of what is my next index when I'm adding stuff to it. So I can easily add stuff to the next index. I have to keep track of that variable. So with array, I, when I'm adding stuff to an array, I have to keep track of what index I'm at and, and I have to add it at that next index that's empty, right? I have to keep track of that myself. An array list does that for you. With an array, if I remove stuff, I've got to remove something. If I remove it out of the middle, I've got to bring all the other data elements up in the array to make sure that my empty slots are on the end of the array. An array list does that for you. An array, if my array gets full, well, I have to create my own new array that's bigger, copy data out of my old array into my new array, throw my old array away. Well, an array list does that for you, right? So the array list adds on features to an array. Oftentimes, an array list is called a dynamic array because it can grow on its own and you don't have to manage that. More times than not, you will use list over arrays. And when you do use list more times than not, you will most likely be using array list. Now in our upcoming lessons, we're gonna go over other types of data structures. We're probably gonna go over a set next. So I'll put a link to our set video and I'll put a link to our arrays video at the end of this video. Right over here or here, somewhere in here, you'll see those links. All right, hey, thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Have a great week.